Today in the headlines, Jeff Bezos is back and he's here to build AI. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. So today in the main episode, we're looking at the winners and losers following Gemini 3. And actually for the headlines, we're talking about two companies slash projects that I don't get into in depth in that main episode, but really this kind of forms a complete where do things stand now kind of combination. The big one that we're going to talk about is Jeff Bezos coming out of retirement in the CEO slot in order to build a new AI company. But I did want to also give a mention to XAI releasing Grok 4.1, which both the company and Elon say brings significant improvement to real world usefulness. To train the model, XAI developed new reinforcement learning processes that allowed them to create an autonomous training environment using agents. The model update is focused on improvements to writing quality, personality, and instruction following. A-B testing has been conducted over the past few weeks on X and on Grok.com, with XAI finding that users prefer responses from the new model almost 65% of the time. Similar results were found on the LM Arena boards, where Grok 4.1 and 4.1 Thinking leapfrogged the other frontier models like Gemini 2.5 Pro, Claude Sonnet 4.5, and GPT-5. Grok 4 had been ranked below those models prior to the upgrade. Unfortunately, GPT-5.1 has not been included in LM Arena, so we don't know how XAI's new model stacks up against the latest from OpenAI. Grok 4.1 also tops the leaderboard on the EQ bench measurement of emotional intelligence. On the Creative Writing V3 benchmark, Grok 4.1 is beaten out slightly by GPT-5.1, but outranks all other models. Now, it goes without saying that this was announced just before Gemini 3, so Gemini 3 is not included on these yet. In addition to usability improvements, Grok 4.1 also has a dramatic reduction in hallucinations compared to Grok 4 Fast. Now, overall, it is interesting to see XAI follow OpenAI and push an update focused on EQ and writing quality. Like the release of GPT-5.1, this update didn't include any benchmarking of coding ability or the other typical objective benchmarks. Professor Ethan Malik posted, Interesting changes in Grok 4.1, decreases in harmful responses, but also increases in sycophancy and deception. And this, of course, is one of the great challenges when it comes to model personality, is are there ways for people to like their interactions without the model just being endlessly coddling and sycophantic? That is something that I'm sure we will continue to discuss. But now we have to get to what was the big news before Gemini 3, that Jeff Bezos is funding a new AI startup, and much bigger, that he will be personally taking the lead as co-CEO. The new startup is called Project Prometheus, and has apparently been operating in stealth for some time ahead of this announcement. Sources said that Prometheus already has nearly 100 employees, including researchers poached from other labs, including OpenAI, DeepMind, and Meta. Bezos' co-founder and co-CEO in the venture is Vic Bajaj, a physicist and chemist who previously worked at Google Special Projects division Google X. Now, Google X is known for moonshot projects, which included the self-driving car prototype that became Waymo, and a drone delivery service that turned into Wing. Vic most recently co-founded an AI and data science company called Foresight Labs around three years ago, with sources saying he left that job recently to focus on Project Prometheus. So what is this company? Is it another model company coming to sneak in and buy NVIDIA GPUs and try to compete? The short answer is no, absolutely not. Instead, Project Prometheus appears to be focused on applying AI to physical tasks. The New York Times, in their reporting, described the focus on AI for engineering and manufacturing of computers, automobiles, and spacecraft. Sources said the startup will be working in a similar direction to Periodic Labs, who are aiming to automate experiments in material science. It doesn't seem like the company has fully picked a direction at this stage. However, a lot of the speculation is that the work would likely intersect with Bezos' interest in space exploration through his company Blue Origin. Now, aside from Bezos returning to the CEO role, one element of the story that's grabbing a lot of attention is the, uh, 6.2 billion, that's billion with a B, in seed funding. That immediately makes Project Prometheus one of the most well-resourced early-stage startups in AI. For comparison, Mira Marathi's Thinking Machines Lab raised 2 billion in seed funding in July, while Ilya Sutskever's Safe Superintelligence raised 3 billion across two rounds late last year and earlier this year. Now, as you might imagine, much of the funding is said to be coming from Bezos himself, Still, the startup will have whatever resources it needs to hire an extremely elite team of researchers and do pretty much whatever they want. Given that Bezos hasn't run a small company in a very long time, a lot of the reporting is wondering what it's going to be like for him to be the CEO of a 100-person startup. Since he retired as Amazon CEO in 2021, Bezos has mostly made headlines for his mega yacht and his extravagant wedding. But throughout the 2010s, Bezos was the darling of MBA programs around the world. He was never known as a technologist like Elon or a marketer like Steve Jobs, 
Instead, he was seen as an elite manager able to harness a huge workforce to drive massive growth and domination in multiple sectors. The Bezos philosophies that drove Amazon's success were largely built around the idea of scaling without losing agility. But those lessons might be outdated at this point. AI-native organizations have been obsessed with the idea of staying as small as possible, given how much leverage a small team of people empowered with AI can really have. Now, how able to adapt he is to the new world, we'll have to wait and see. Elon jokingly welcomed Bezos back with a tweet that said, Haha, no way, copycat. While others pointed out the significance of AI being enough to lure him back. Mary G writes, Bezos couldn't even make it three years without being CEO again. Man saw everyone doing AI startups and said, hold my six billion. Now, while some incorrectly assumed that any AI company was just going to be another model company, others were quick to point out that there is something very different going on here. Rohit Mittal writes, Jeff Bezos becoming a CEO of a new company is one of the most bullish signs for the AI times, and he's choosing to work on AI for manufacturing, the most bullish sign for American manufacturing in a long time. AI Tools Hub 2.0 writes, Bezos isn't chasing another shiny chatbot. He's quietly aiming at the boring trillion-dollar layer, AI that moves atoms, factories, supply chains, engineering. First wave was models. Next wave is whoever wires them into the real economy. I think that's a great take, and that is exactly why I'm excited to see what happens with this. For now, however, that is going to do it for the headlines. Next up, the main episode.